Wes, it's an interesting space right now. We've seen a lot of news in the last few days with the Rice brothers taking control essentially of EQT, the largest natural gas producer in the US. Their pitch is really, it's a space that's ripe for disruption. It needs change. It, is that right? Is that a good read? I think it, uh, it is the space that's right for disruption. You know, when you, when you take a, a broad view of it, in the United States, uh, less than 1% of our electricity comes from uh, oil. So it comes from natural gas and coal and nuclear and renewables, et cetera. When you leave the U.S. and you look at emerging countries around the world, it's the polar opposite, where virtually 100% of their energy comes from oil. And that has the attributes of being expensive and dirty environmentally and really volatile in price. And so those are the places we think are the most obvious places to go. There's a lot of other things we think in, in the sector. So I, 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 don't, I don't know them well, and, and, uh, but I think that the, the thesis on the, on the sector is the right one. But when you say go there, you are physically going to other countries and you're putting in the infrastructure so that you can then deliver the product. Is that not quite high risk because you're tying up so much capital to actually build out the infrastructure? Um, we are going there. Um, and when you, when you, this is, and I've thought about this a lot as to why it hasn't happened before. And I think if you're in a country and you're trying to pay your bills, right, um, you don't have a lot of extra capital to go invest in infrastructure. That's just a, a broad statement, but I think it's true. And so um, we have gone in to permit, design, build, and operate infrastructure in these places. And that allows for the introduction of gas you can then replace you know, diesel, heavy fuel oil, and other things. Massive benefits for them, both environmentally and economically. And we think the return on capital is adequate for the risk that we're taking. And if I'm a big uh, LNG exporter, why don't I look at what you're doing and say, OK, I'll let those guys put the infrastructure in, and then I'll come in and undercut them on price? Uh, they have to go build that infrastructure, too. You, so, own, you can only use your own infrastructure? Yeah, no, we own that, and that's a critical part of it. Those are, those are, they act essentially as ports or terminals, and I think eventually that's how they'll be valued, because they are effectively a port. It just is an LNG port. That allows us to bring the fuel in that we buy and, and then distribute it to our customers. Um, and so if they want to compete, they can compete. They just got to go on the airplane just like I do and go visit these places. And the other area where you're spending a lot of time, which is really interesting, is the railway business. That's uh, right. and, and you recently opened the first one, this uh, the East Florida East Coast, which is obviously connecting Orlando and Miami. Um, also doing one currently between L.A. and Las Vegas. And I yep. want to talk to you about whether you're going to try and get that holy grail of L.A. to San yeah. Francisco that everyone talks about. No one's built railroads in this country for 125 years. Yep. What are you seeing that others aren't? You know, uh, we've, we've, as a firm, we've invested in a lot of infrastructure, and in transportation in particular. So over $30 billion in transportation-related assets, and trains is a big part of that. We invested in the Florida East Coast Railway in 2006, and it's a very famous railway. It was Henry Flagler's railway that really settled Florida, right? And it had passenger service on it. And uh, when you look at the, uh, the pairs of cities that do well around the world, and in the U.S., frankly, um, they're very profitable. So London to Paris, very profitable. Madrid, Seville, uh, uh, Milan, you know, Rome, and Washington, D.C. to New York City. So I, I think proof of concept exists in this country for it. And you look at Miami, one of the most attractive destinations in the, in the world. Orlando, one of the busiest destinations in the world. Linking those two up is very obvious. We think there's you know, 12 to 15 very obvious city pairs in the United States, Los Angeles to Las Vegas being the next one that's on the blocks, but there's a bunch of others. And I think that they're going to be highly profitable. But why hasn't it been done? Because if you'll forgive me saying, the, the rail infrastructure from a passenger point of view in the U.S. sucks. Yeah. It's great in Europe, as you yeah. mentioned, a lot of connected cities, but here no one has done it for so long. You probably have to be a little crazy and a little committed to, to spend the time. I and mean, we really started the process in Florida in 2012. And so we're fully under funded, fully under construction. It'll be operating in about three years. That first one then took about 10 years. The one, uh, Las Vegas, we hope to be fully per permitted and funded by the end of the year. That'll get built in about the same time frame because it's quite a bit easier to build. Um, and I think once you establish proof of concept for one, the ones to follow will be a lot, lot, lot faster. And the, the, the one, the Las Vegas to LA one you acquired from Express West, they were looking at it costing around $7 billion. You think you can do it for a lot less? How? Uh, I think we just, we benefit from having, we're doing it right now. So we're not, you know, there's a big difference between speculating about it and actually doing it. So and we've had a lot of lessons learned as we've done this. And I think uh, both in terms of the selections you make about what infrastructure you use, where you put it and whatnot. So those guys did a tremendous job as, uh, you know, Tony Marnell and, and his family had done a tremendous job in doing a lot of the groundwork for it. And we're the beneficiaries of that. There are partners in this now. I saw those guys last week. But I think that uh, our, our design will save us a lot of money and a lot of time. All right, we've got, to, we've got to finish on some football questions. And, of course, by football, I mean soccer. Yeah. Uh, you're the owner or part owner of Aston Villa Football Club. Very excitingly, they came up to the Premiership last season. It was a great game against Leeds. What do you need to do to stay there? Uh, win enough games that you end up with enough points. What does no. that cost? Uh, you know, it did cost money. I mean, we uh, look, we 
Um, myself, Nassif Suarez, who's my partner, lives in London. Uh, we bought the club about a, about a year ago, and it had been relegated and it had some challenges, but it's a very famous club, as you know, and very well supported. Birmingham's a great city, um, and it's a famous club, so we felt great about the prospects for it. Uh, very fortunate to get up at the end of the year, right? It was a um, it's an exciting game to say the least, but we're happy with the outcome. And now we have this, you know, really massive opportunity to try and turn it into what it used to be, which is one of the great clubs in England. Do you have a figure in mind for how much you need to invest? Uh, we do have a budget. Uh, we don't share that, but uh, you know, I think we signed our seventh player today in the transfer window. And there's still a couple of weeks left. Um, it's a balance, right? Because you can't just go replace your team. And frankly, a number of the members of our team are absolutely premier quality players. So you want to take that and build around it. And there's a couple of key positions we've added to. And you know, the goal uh, year one is to establish yourself as a very solid foundational Premier League team, and then hopefully go on from there. Last question, very quickly: How long is it going to take before you can potentially win the league? You know, uh, um, I invested in the Milwaukee Bucks with some some uh, partners five years ago, and we were the worst team in the league. And this last year, we didn't win the championship, but we had the best regular season. So we, in English terms, we would have won the championship because we had the, that was five years. And so. Look, I think you have to be decisive, and those decisions have to be good ones. But if you do that, I think that in a relatively short period of time, you can, you can have a lot of success. I will be watching closely. Wes Edens, thank you so much for nice joining me.